plate theory and theoretical plates before discussing the peak broadening and band broadening first we will discuss about the shape of chromatographic peak the solute component that are injected into the column if all these component that are from the same species if they are eluted at once which mean that they get eluted at the same time the shape of the chromatographic peak will look like this one but this is not the case they get eluted at different time so the sample sample component that are injected into the column here the three colors are given but these three colors are given just for convenience these are the sample component or solute component of the same species so they will eluted at different time some molecule travel fast so they will elute it first so they will produce the first portion of the peak that is green color other molecule most of the molecule travel with average velocity and then elute it so it will produce the second portion of the peak and some molecule lag behind and get eluted so they will produce the third portion of the peak so if we look at this peak at this uh, diagram we have three region that is for green blue and red they are eluted at different time not at the same time just like in this case so this shape of the peak that is known as chromatographic peak it will resemble the gaussian curve so the chromatographic peak shape is uh, related to the gaussian curve band broadening or broadening of peak as the solute molecule are not eluted at the same time from the column this result in peak or band broadening the longer the time spent by the component greater will be the broadening broadening will increase the peak width and causes poor resolution so there are two theories for broadening of the peak one is known as plate theory another one is known as rate theory so this video is about the plate theory plate theory of chromatography the efficiency of chromatography is related experimentally to solute's band width or peak width an efficient system will represent a narrow peak if the peak is narrow then then we will say that the system or the chromatographic column will be efficient if the peak is broader then there will be poor resolution the plate theory for describing the efficiency of chromatography was proposed by martin and sench in 1941 plate theory has contributed significantly in understanding the formation of bands and band broadening there are few assumption given for the plate theory but before going to these assumption first we will consider a diagram representing a stationary phase the solute component get injected into this stationary phase with the help of mobile phase so it will represent a solute component this solute component will move forward with the help of mobile phase and it will reach to the detector that is present at this side this solute component while moving forward with the help of mobile phase it will get interacted with the stationary phase also so some of the solute component will shift to the stationary phase and while moving forward before going to the next side of the stationary phase or mobile phase equilibrium will establish so at each point while it is moving forward there will be equilibrium of solute component between the stationary phase and mobile phase and it will move towards the detector so at each this point which will represent the uh, stationary phase and mobile phase that solute component will be get equilibrated between these component this is known as theoretical plates so these area are known as theoretical plates so now we will discuss about the assumptions so chromatographic column can be divided into n number of volume elements or imaginary sections called plates so this is a plate this is a plate 
that are known as theoretical plate theoretical plate the all these are representing the theoretical plate it is important to understand that physical plates do not exist inside the column it is only an imaginary concept to understand the separation process so it this point should be noted that these there is no existence there is no physical existence of these plates there is no boundaries or there is no partition between the column so it will represent the just imaginary lines or imaginary areas at which the solute component get equilibrated between the stationary phase and mobile phase at each plate the partition of the solute between the stationary and mobile phase is rapid and equilibrium reach before the solute goes to the next plate so first equilibrium will establish in this plate then it will move to the other plate then equilibrium will establish in the second plate then it will move to the third plate and so on so there will be a rapid equilibrium of the solute component between the stationary phase and mobile phase and when the equilibrium is completed then it will move to the other plate the solute the solute distribution is constant and is independent of the solute concentration that is the distribution constant if the total length of the column is l the height equivalent of theoretical plate is that is h is equal to l by n so this is the length of the column that is represented by l and these are the number of theoretical plate that are imaginary sections in the column and the height of the theoretical plate that is equal to this one this area is equal to the height of the theoretical plate so the height of theoretical plate that is equal to l by n the more step in the column will introduce greater column efficiency with less broadening so there is a point when there are more number of theoretical plates so the column efficiency will be better and when the column efficiency will be better then there will be less broadening of the peak so this will represent the broadening that is sigma square it is inversely proportional to the n number of theoretical plates that is band broadening if we uh, remove this square sign so we will take square root over n so sigma is proportional to 1 over square root of n or we can say that the square root of n is proportional to 1 over sigma where sigma that is standard deviation of the gaussian peak describe the spread of the molecule in the band sigma is also a function of retention time that is the more time the molecule will spread out in the column the more will be the broadening we have already discussed it that there will be a phenomena in which the molecule will spend less time in the column than they then they that will represent a uh, narrow peak or better resolution if the molecule or the solute component spread more time in the column then they will cause the peak broadening so it has it is related to the retention time uh, also it is related to the number of theoretical plates so sigma is proportional to tr that is retention time so combining the uh, equation 1 and 2 so sigma is proportional to tr retention time and it is proportional to 1 over square root of n so square root of n is proportional to if we arrange this formula we will get square root of n is proportional to tr divided by sigma if we look at this formula square root of n is equal to or proportional to tr retention time divided by sigma we can find the or we can calculate the number of theoretical plates by measuring the band width and retention time so we will use this formula for calculating the number of theoretical plates first we will remove this square root sign by squaring uh, this whole equation so square root of n whole square is equal to tr divided by sigma whole square now it will result in n is equal to tr divided by sigma whole square if we look at this diagram wb that is the width base width it is equal to 4 sigma 
so sigma will be equal to wb divided by 4 so putting the value of sigma as wb divided by 4 in this equation we will get tr divided by wb divided by 4 whole square so now 4 multiply by 4 or squaring the 4 it will result in 16 so it will it will be moved towards the numerator side 16 tr square divided by wb square if the band width uh, if the width of the band is measured at a height equal to half of the peak height half of the peak height at is it is equal to wh is equal to 2.35 that is the half of the peak height 2.35 so we will find its value n is equal to tr divided by wh divided by 2.35 whole square squaring this 2.35 we will get 5.54 and we will move it towards the numerator side so we will get n is equal to 5.54 tr square divided by w half square and there is another formula n is equal to 16 tr square divided by wb square so these two formulas are used for calculating the number of theoretical plates in a column